Welcome everyone, Dylan Jamelli here today with a brand new video for you. So today we're actually gonna talk about how steroid drug testing works. But before we get into that, I have to reiterate, I'm not a doctor. Anything I say in these videos is for your entertainment purposes only. What you do with this information is completely and utterly up to you. And lastly, I am not advising nor condoning you to use any of the things we discuss whatsoever. So let's talk about how steroid drug testing works. Now, the key to understanding anabolic steroid detection times actually lies in the ability to learn about and understand how drug testing for anabolic steroids and performance enhancing drugs actually works and what exactly the factors are involved in affecting these detection times. So, drug testing for anabolic steroids and performance enhancing drugs is literally one of the most misunderstood topics and concepts by both the average person and athletes as well. All right, bodybuilders, individuals that use anabolic steroids. So there's in fact a few popular misconceptions in you know regards to these testings. The first misconception out there is that general drug testing holds the capability to test for anabolic steroids. It's completely wrong. And I get this question a lot, all right? Testing for anabolic steroids is gonna require a very specific test. And it's gonna require the use of a really like sophisticated, really expensive and advanced equipment. So being that anabolic steroids are hormones that are actually native to the human body as well as synthetic analogs of these same hormones, the methodology and pathway to detecting anabolic steroids and the um, individual you know, steroid detection times are actually quite different from the uh, methodology used to detect you know, commonly used recreational drugs that they generally test you for on like a five, seven panel test. You know, they're gonna do marijuana, cocaine, methamphetamine, opiates, things like that. Now, <clears throat> these recreational drugs for like all intents and purposes, they're foreign to the body and they operate through like completely different mechanisms and pathways that hormones and anabolic steroids do. Now, in addition to this, the equipment and the procedures required for the detection of steroids and common recreational drugs are quite different. For recreational drugs, it's very cheap and it's really cost effective in comparison to anabolic steroid testing, which is why they can be employed far more frequently and on like a much broader, wider scale, right? Um, <clears throat> the second misconception, which is almost as common as the first one that I just talked about, is that general uh, testing procedure requires urinating in a cup or having blood drawn and having that sample inserted into like, you know, some mo uh, machine that's gonna basically detect and know every single substance in anabolic steroid in that sample. This is just completely wrong, all right? Almost the whole process of steroid detection actually requires human interaction at every level. And the investigation into steroid detection also involves some sort of person, basically at every single minute of the testing uh, procedure. All right, so advanced machinery and equipment is used, obviously, but humans have to do all the investigation and all the different types of methods and operate the machines at every single step of the procedure and it also has to be conducted very, very meticulously, which is why the whole process is extremely prone to error in itself. All right, human error, human error occurs. We know this. So the testing procedure for anabolic steroids and other performance enhancing drugs is extremely complex and expensive and there's only a handful of laboratories in the world that can really conduct this testing properly and accurately. So, furthermore, and perhaps the most important message to take home from this entire video, anabolic steroid testing, it involves the testing for all known anabolic steroids and their analogs, all, okay? So this must be repeated again because it's so crucial for you to understand this. It involves testing for all known anabolic steroids and their analogs. So what does that mean, Dylan? What does that mean? You keep stressing it. So what's the big deal? This means that in order to catch an athlete or an individual using anabolic steroids, his or her urine or blood sample 
has to be sampled for every single steroid that's in existence. And, and, and that's known until it's narrowed down to whatever the person being tested for is using, all right, or has recently used. So this is where steroid detection times are gonna play a huge role in all of this, all right? Um, many anabolic steroid testing that's conducted by urinalysis, um, that's basically the most popular, but the second most popular method of testing is by blood analysis. All right, a third testing method is gonna be involving hair samples. But this is not really reliable for anabolic steroids and it's mainly done for testing for recreational drugs. So, as I said, very expensive procedures, very expensive equipment for the purpose of anabolic steroid detection and it involves um, just really extensive procedures in itself. They're extremely expensive, like I said, and the pieces of equipment actually cost millions of dollars, all right, in order to test maybe a handful of individuals. So that's why this is not commonly done, all right? You see things like USADA, UFC, setting to USADA, WADA. These are like the biggest, you know, uh, places that you could possibly imagine to do this sort of testing. You're not going to walk in into an employer, all right, it's a basic employer that's giving drug testing and, and get tested for this. It's going to have to be a multi-million dollar entity. So when you're worried about this, just remember, NCAA, you better be worried. USADA, WADA, you better be worried. Job testing, not likely to be need worried, all right? Now, if you're on probation or parole, I can't tell you with certainty, but chances are extremely low unless you got busted for steroids that you're gonna be tested for this. Generally, they just give you a five panel or seven panel, whatever test. I'm not exactly sure what they do now. Um, <clears throat> but if you were busted for steroids, don't be an idiot and use them and then go get drug tested by a parole or probation officer. If you are that ignorant, you deserve what you get, okay? But beyond that, I hope you understand how this works and how expensive it is and kind of get a, a, a grasp and a gauge on what to expect. So, Dylan Jamelli, signing off.